Hey guys, this is Inka. So you know how I mentioned before that sometimes I just like doing fun little cooking projects at home and um, this is one of them. I really miss eating these mochi donuts that I used to have in Taiwan. They're from a brand called Mr. Donut and they're also very, very popular in Japan. And you guys already know that I love all things QQ. And these donuts are super chewy. They have a very mochi-like texture and they're actually a little bit different from the mochi donuts we have here. These donuts are actually made with tapioca flour, which as some of you might know, is also the same flour that we use to make boba. So it's like a boba donut. <laughs> so it's like a boba mochi donut, essentially. The recipe I'm following this time is from Just One Cookbook. She did a lot of research to find out what ingredients to use and what ratio of what to what in order to achieve that classic texture. Big shout out to her because this process does not seem easy at all. You can see here that the dough is already getting really, really sticky, which is not what you would usually expect for when you're making donuts. I was just fascinated with this dough because look at how stretchy that is. It was insane. It being this sticky meant that it was definitely not that easy to handle. I had to remember to oil the sides of the bowl. I just covered it with a warm towel and popped it in the oven, not turned on of course, with a bowl of warm water and let that do its thing. There's a lot of ways to enjoy this donut, but um, I decided to go with a matcha frosting and also a Dalgona candy frosting, which you'll see later. But for the matcha frosting, I was definitely very, very generous with my matcha powder. I like it when it's almost a little more bitter. I like it when it's this super vibrant, almost like darker green. After the dough is rested, it almost like tripled in size. And I should not have touched it at this point. You can see that it's super, super sticky. I definitely had to flour my surface. But it was also important to not add too much flour, otherwise the texture would change. It would become, I guess, a little more like bread. So I was trying really hard not to touch it too much. Once the dough was ready, it was pretty much just Dividing it up into portions, you wanted to make sure that you had about an equal amount for each donut. And again, keeping it in a plastic wrap to make sure it doesn't get too dry. This was also the part where I was a lot stricter than usual when it came to like exact measurements because I wanted my donuts to come out around the same size. Each individual donut ball, I wanted it to be around the same shape. So I actually measured every single thing and it took a while, but I think it was worth it. I'm just using my chopstick to add a little bit of water to the dough to make sure it sticks to each other. covering it with a damp towel again. And then it was pretty much just repeating the same process over and over again. This part definitely takes a lot of time. I tried to work faster, but um, it is definitely one of the more time consuming desserts I've made. Once all the donuts were formed, that's when I could start deep frying them. And I had a thermometer to make sure that the oil was hot enough and not too hot, not too cold. And I also had my timer to make sure that I stayed on track. I don't usually deep fry stuff at home, but watching it turn that golden brown color when I flipped it was pretty rewarding. 
Isn't that so cute? I love these little cute mochi donuts. They're perfect for sharing later too. While the donuts were still hot, I wanted to make sure that I dipped them into the matcha frosting I made earlier. Then the frosting could have that beautiful shine. This matcha frosting is also just perfect for everything. Because I wanted it to be a slightly darker green, I actually went ahead and double dipped them. And I think it actually turns out looking better also tastes better if you like matcha that much. Once the matcha donuts were done, that's when I made my Dalgona candy, which is pretty much just sugar and baking soda. I think I put a little too much baking soda because it started puffing up real fast. But um, this is a super satisfying shot. I love how this turned out because you get that beautiful caramel color that almost instantly hardens. My mistake though was that I let the candy sit in the pan and it ended up burning, so do not do that. Once the donuts were cooled down and the frosting was set, that's when I plated them up. They turned out looking so gorgeous. Maybe not the other side, but I was truly so obsessed with this Dalgona candy one. You can see that the candy is already hardened and when you break it, you hear that satisfying crack and look at that beautiful inside. I had to make a drink to go with it, so I went with some Dalgona candy milk tea, which is one of my favorite drinks right now. And that is a perfect afternoon tea. I really, really like how chewy these ended up being and how the flavors complemented it perfectly. I hope you guys enjoyed this and I will see you guys next time. Bye.